listening to Range Minded from Independence Indoor Shooting. Before we get started, we want to remind you to check us out on Facebook and now on Instagram. Just search for Range Minded Podcast. This episode is a little bit of a short one, but it's still a very big deal because this is episode number 52, which marks a whole year of the Range Minded Podcast. We want to thank you for listening first and foremost, whether you've been with us since the beginning or you've just discovered us. It's been a heck of a ride so far, and we're not aiming to stop anytime soon. So we take this episode to do a little bit of a retrospective, talk about how the podcast got started, do some reminiscing, and, of course, get lost in the weeds. In the episode after this one, next week, we'll talk about where we want to go from here and what you can expect from us in the future. Speaking of, if you ever want to suggest an episode for us, make sure you email us, podcast at iishooting.com, or check us out on Facebook and Instagram and uh, let us know what you want to hear. Uh, With all of that out of the way, thank you again for listening, and we hope you enjoy episode number 52 of Range Minded, the one-year retrospective. Hello and welcome to Range Minded from Independence Indoor Shooting. Uh, this is episode number 52. <laughs> Already? Uh, <laughs> that means it's been a full year of Range Minded. 52 weeks of our sultry voices. That's right. That's playing right. Playing the ears of all. And uh, speaking of voices, my name is Mark Long. I'm Steve Zimmerman, and I get to be in the flesh again. Yes. Yeah. In the flesh, thankfully, for this momentous episode, uh, where, as in true range minded fashion, we have no plan. <laughs> this one's Sometimes we the... have plans. We do, sometimes. But we yeah. decided not to have any guests or anything in this episode. No, this one's just for us because we were going to. It's been a whole year of podcasts, um, 52 weeks, and we wanted to do a little bit of a retro perspective because you said it earlier it's been a heck of a year yeah a roller coaster a roller coaster of a year and i think um you know we just kind of wanted to go back and talk about that and then uh the next episode we'll talk about the future and what we're excited about and just in the world of guns and what we want to achieve and all that kind of stuff yeah we've got some goals we've got some some hopes and aspirations and dreams hopefully uh to keep you guys listening yeah and, uh, keep you entertained so because yeah. cliffhangers <laughs> cliffhangers yeah uh for the second year but uh let's go all just all the way back to the beginning do you remember uh ricky telling you that he wanted to do a podcast or how did you because i think you were the guy who wanted to, to have yeah, a podcast I, right i wanted to do a podcast and and ricky and i well <laughs> just kind of molded over for a while sure but i wanted to do it regardless i okay. just didn't know how to get it going yeah um I talked to some people that customers we've had before that have done podcasts, but weren't really active with them or anything. So, you know, I just kind of listened to how they got started and and where to go and where to, where to begin and and how to make it happen. But it just kind of just smoldered. It was just an idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then one day we, Ricky decided he needed some help in the, (laughs) the academy and interviewed somebody and, uh, somebody happened to work in the radio business. <laughs> some audio production and some broadcasting experience, and it, and there we are. And that brainstorming, that interview turned into a brainstorming event. Yeah, it really did. And then from there, it just kind of blossomed. And then we just started, and we never stopped. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how I remember it. I So I had moved here, and I wanted to get into, like, I heard, you know, Independence was opening up, and it was like, okay, that sounds like a pretty cool place. And I walked in here once just by myself and just kind of surveyed the place, and I didn't talk to anybody, anything. I was probably a creeper, and I just kind of walked out. Probably. And I'm sure somebody noticed. <laughs> we called the cops. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, that's what those, what those lights were on the way mm-hmm. out. Um, but anyway, so I was like, okay, it's really cool but like i want to i don't want to pay for a range <laughs> you know i want to maybe get more involved with with firearms and and kind of develop this hobby a little bit more and uh so maybe i can you know maybe get a side job or a volunteer or something like yeah. that or whatever and i think i saw it on facebook or whatever that you guys we were looking for volunteers and i'm like okay well that's probably a good way to start you know at least maybe get my foot in the door get to know some people and yeah. just kind of volunteer and it says there's some perks you know you can after certain hours you can get you get into the range for free or um take some classes for free discounts on ammo i'm like i could i could live with that so um i submitted my uh application my volunteer application and it said here attach a resume like, okay i got the resume that i give to everybody else <laughs> it's got all my radio broadcast experience on it or whatever and okay what i don't know Let's, we'll see what happens and then 
a couple weeks go by, I kind of forget about it. Like, okay, maybe they're not looking right now or whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then like two months later, I get a phone call and, uh, it's Ricky <laughs> and he goes, Hey, this is, you know, this is, this is Rick from independence indoor shooting. And I got your application about, uh, you know, for a volunteer, um, you know, we were, we saw this experience you have with radio and advertising and all that. Why don't you want you to come in and talk about this and a couple other things and I said, okay. So we came in and scheduled, a. Uh, an interview or whatever and then we were talking about um i think contacting people for security um initially we were talking about contacting people for security like uh classes and like building security and that oh, kind yeah, of that's stuff when like he was working on like the church security churches and, and school yeah. security and all that kind of stuff and then and he goes well he kind of like as ricky is want to do he'll like switch gears halfway through and almost mid paragraph like, <laughs> yeah exactly oh, and i was thinking he goes well actually you know we we want to kind of we got been having this idea to have a podcast and we were thinking about doing that is that, is that something you'd be able to help out with and uh, I don't know if you know this but I, I in my head I go well I've never done a podcast before <laughs> well sure yeah I could do that yeah and uh, I mean I know I know the I knew you know about long form programming and all that kind sure. of stuff and audio and so I go well it's just it's the same deal so <laughs> um, so yeah that's that's how it started and then we bought the gear and set it up and, I remember that very first episode and, and if you guys haven't listened to that first episode which man imagine all of you have yeah go back and listen to it and it may not tell from the audio but if you were here that day in my office yeah it was <laughs> your office we had all this stuff it was a mess we actually ordered the wrong some wrong gear too we had to plug uh our our control board right into your computer it was a nightmare. It was a mess. And it was it was a little awkward, I think, because we'd only known each other at least maybe or met maybe three or four times, I think, I want to say. And there wasn't a lot of time from that initial brainstorm to to first episode. Three weeks, maybe three, four weeks, because it was like mid-March, I think, when Ricky contacted me and our first was in April. And so now it's it's the end of March now. And so crazy yeah so uh yeah what i'll do actually too I'll, maybe i'll post that first episode because we didn't even we didn't even put it as episode one it was episode zero zero and it was just talking about the three of us and we each talked yeah. about ourselves and and all that's before you well and you've had some broadcast experience in the past but ricky long time ago. yeah so what man what haven't you done <laughs> That's a great question. You, Anything that makes me a lot of money, that's for sure. <laughs> Radio is not that, so no, you learned that's that, why it's been a long time ago. Yeah, there was a reason that I stopped doing radio. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's that's how that all started. And then, like, we had a guest that next, we had Brenda. Yeah, Brenda. Brenda was Bruno was guest, on. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of took off from there. Gosh, it's crazy. So it's it's been a wild ride. I mean, I I feel like I've learned more about firearms in this last year than I have, and and, and not only learned more, but gotten more comfortable and confident with firearms uh, than in the previous you know four or five years that I got into the hobby. Well, the other nice thing was about having you jump on board is you spent a lot of time with the uh, independent women, and and so yeah, it's it's given you a lot of field practice, I guess you're there helping people hands on now, which is awesome. And yeah. that, when I was doing that kind of stuff, when I was in range every day, all day, yeah. Um, my people skills improved. Sure. But it also, you know, downtimes I could go shoot on the range. Yeah. When, when I was management, you know, no time to it's do it. It's a different anything. story. But, but, uh, it's, it's different when you're in range helping people. And it's, uh, to me, it's awesome. That's a, that's the fulfilling part to me with it is, uh, you know, it, is being able to get get people more comfortable with firearms mm -hmm. and and more confident with them and you know helping people with you know malfunctions or something like that or things don't work and it's nice being able to teach very much so even just simple stuff yeah. you know just basic operations of stuff and just little tidbits here there that you only learn really by shooting yeah you know um and then yeah i started rsoing with classes um because ricky was like hey let's get you well, i think you both were let's get you an R, you know as an rso mm -hmm. and get some kind of field experience like you said and um i was i don't know if i told you i was nervous for that class were you yeah a little bit i don't know why because i didn't know you guys that well and i'm like okay how's this gonna be like really hard yeah like, we just kind of dumped you in there so yeah hey come on well and that's that's most anything i, I get into extra extracurricularly that's usually just jump you know both feet right in and just go for it um 
But yeah, I, I, I thought, oh man, it's going to be eight hours. It's going to be like a big deal thing. Like this is a lot of responsibility <laughs> as an RSO. And, and it is a lot of, I, I chuckle not, not to diminish the re- <laughs> responsibility, but it's, uh, it's important to be observant, but it's not a huge deal. Once, well, I don't, know how, I don't know how to say it without diminishing what it sounds like. But. Once you get the hang of it. It, it's a steep learning curve, I think, at first. But once you get the hang of it, you know what to look for. Yeah. And once you know what to look for, it gets easier. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, things can happen pretty quick. Um, but like you said, if like I said, if you know what to look for, it's like defensive driving. If you know that somebody's probably gonna yeah. pull out in front of you or cut cut you off or whatever, you can expect that and act yeah. before something crazy happens. Yeah, and happens. it's true. You you know, I think I've said it on here before. I could always tell you know, what shooters were going to be the problem shooters and who I was going to spend a lot more time closer to. And yep. And I started RSOing with classes. So I had, you know, Bill's classes, mm-hmm. like the beginning pistol, basic pistol and the intermediate pistol and CCW stuff. And, um, that taught me a lot real fast about who to watch and, and nine out of the 10 people use it. Cause it may be 10 to 12 to 14 people in each class yeah. and 90%, 95% of the people were just fine. There's usually one or two people where it's just like, you got to keep your eyes on them. Yeah. You know? And, um, like I said, uh, I've said it before, but, uh, Jessica and Sarah have the independent women, they're, they're dialed in. They know what they're doing now. And, you know, you still got to watch them to make sure, but they, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to watch them and to RSO yeah. them. So the other thing is too, is, is a lot of those ladies haven't shot much until yeah. they got involved in the organization. And because they're having top notch training from the beginning, there's no bad habits. Yeah. You start good habits from the ground yeah. up, which is and cool. So that's the difference of going with independent women compared to just general pop coming into the range. And that is, the frustrating part. Yeah. And it's normally the people that are, that are overconfident mm-hmm. without the experience to back it up. Yeah. Or, you know? or just complacency. I don't know the best way to put it without offending maybe a few groups, but there's, <laughs> there's some people that carry guns so often that they get complacent. They don't think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been kind of interesting to see, but yeah, jumping into the RSO class, but af- after a couple hours of the RSO class, I was like, okay, I, I think I can get the hang of this yeah. and these guys are all good guys. And that's really what, because I will say that uh, going into a gun store where you don't know anybody can be kind of intimidating, oh, yeah. but once you get to know people, I mean, everybody's so friendly, you know what I mean? And especially here, maybe, maybe this is just a special place, but, um, yeah, you know, everybody here is super friendly. And as long as you don't, you say, as long as you say, you don't know something as long as you're willing to admit what you don't know, you yeah. know, people will teach you, they'll help you. Um, you know, you ask for help, they'll give it to you, you know, times 10 and, uh, and, and you really do build a community here, yeah. you know? So it's been, that's been another interesting thing too, is being able to get to know more people in the, in the gun and firearms community and the defensive community. Yeah. Um, a lot of good people, man. A lot of good people. Yeah. It, it, uh, uh, you know, I, you, you say I've worked a lot of different places. I have worked a lot of different places and, and actually a pretty vast, vast uh, array of industry. Like I've, I've done more things than I, I don't I'm kind of a job hop, I guess. <laughs> but uh, the firearms industry is a, a whole different family yeah. than anybody else. And and it really does feel that way. You know, I spent some time at SHOT Show. I've, I've talked to, you know, a lot of the manufacturers here in the Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just a different breed of people and they're a good they're good people. They really are. Yeah. You get some snobs, you get some of the people that are since internet sensations or whatever. And, and that is definitely not uh, a representation of what the, the group really is like. Yeah. And you're going to get that in any hobby or industry or anything like that. You know, there's some snobs or there's holier than thou folks or whatever you want to call them. And, um, you know, you're going to find that in any industry, but yeah, most of the people are, are pretty good people. Yeah. Good on them for being successful and making sure. things happen. But yeah, you know, I mean, if you could make a million dollars from making gun videos, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> we're going to make a million dollars from podcasting, right? I hope so. <laughs> Starting 52, right? Episode 52. So we'll start. We are taking sponsors, sponsorships. Yeah. We need to start talking about that. And, um, but no, that's, that's been the two big things is just being more confident and, uh, and comfortable with firearms, um, carrying more and, and being able to take more classes. Mm-hmm. And that's been a, 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 the third big thing is just the education. 
And yeah. I mean, the more educated you are really does help with the confidence. And well, your, your mind is the, the weapon. And I hate yeah. that term weapon, but yeah. it, your mind is the weapon. It, yeah. It's just the tools at your disposal that you understand how to use and mm-hmm. how to deploy. So education, you can't, you can't short sell yourself on education. Well, especially because I mean, a lot of people, I think watch a YouTube video or two or a dozen or whatever, and they think, okay, yeah, I'm good to carry a firearm. Yeah. Like I, I watched, you know, whoever it could be anybody's videos and, um, five minutes of instruction will beat any amount of YouTube videos yeah. hands well, down. Well, the thing is, is, is they can mimic the actions, right? I can, mm-hmm. I can mimic somebody's draw. Sure. If I watch it enough. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I understand the principle of that draw. Mm-hmm. You know, I can mimic a shot. I, I, I haven't shot for a while, <laughs> but there was a time I, I was a damn good shot. Yeah. And I could put him right where I wanted to, mm-hmm. but it wasn't, that wasn't because I watched a video. I may have watched a trick shot, but then I worked my butt off to make that trick shot happen for me. Mm-hmm. So y- you can mimic things, but you'll never, without taking the time to understand the principle behind it, it's it's worthless to you. Well, and having somebody there to help, you know, with your grip and help mm-hmm. see what you're doing, you know, because you it's like dancing. You might think you're making the right moves or whatever, but if somebody yeah. sees you doing something incorrectly, they can actually correct you. Well, and it might not be the most economic way to, to get there either. We talk yeah. of, you know, m- economics of motion or whatever you want to talk about, however you want to say it. Yeah. There's there's ways to make that fluid and and for and, and for some people it's different. It is. It's different. My for draw is going to be different than yours or Jessica's or whoever's, but it works for me. And yeah. if I can get that tool out when I need it in an expedient manner and, and accurately, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and again, that's another thing too, uh, talking about how, uh, personal, uh, you know, firearms preferences are everything from a holster to, to the firearm itself, to trigger, to lights, to grips, to, you know, there's a reason, like, I remember a couple years ago before I got really like into with independence was I'm like, why is there so much stuff out there for guns and everything? Like, there's yeah. just like, you know, why doesn't everybody just get the best thing? And that's cause I'm like, Oh, you know, my Walther works for me and that's the best. So why doesn't everybody do that? And it's like, well, not everybody's like you a special snowflake, you know? And <laughs> so it's like, you know, you learn that, you know, a lot of people, it's all personal preference, you know, like, yeah. you know, Glock guys or CZ guys, you know, especially for John loving John, <laughs> Lo- our friend, John Carnes. A couple loving- weeks ago, John really came down on CZ guys. Yeah. Yeah. He loves the CZ guys, but I mean, everybody carries something or uses something ideally because it works what's best for yeah. them or same thing with holsters or holster placement or whatever. Um, and just talking to people, you know, and this, this is that can shoot light years better than me. You know, oh, John yeah. being another example of that or Ben or whoever, you know, they carry different ways or whatever, and that's what works for them, yeah. you know? And so, um, you really learn that there is all that variety for, uh, for good reason, because yeah. there's that many different kinds of people and you have to pick what works for you. And I think it really shows, um, that the, the market for firearms isn't dead. Right? Oh, not by a long shot. If, if it was saturated or if people had no desire, you know, if firearms were so bad, then there wouldn't be all these new guns. There mm-hmm. wouldn't be such a variety. It wouldn't be as deep as it is. Um, so if you're, you feel like you're losing confidence about the second amendment, maybe hang on a little longer. Is that positivity I hear coming from you, Steve? Well, I, it's not. Are we turning over a new leaf in our second year of podcasting? I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. Not not on the not, not on about the positive that. side. Not about that. But, yeah. You know, if you've listened to the podcast long enough, you know that I I have a, a feeling about the Constitution and and where it's headed. But I hope I'm wrong. I hope you're wrong too. But yeah. for the best reasons. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I, I think as, as a younger person in my generation um, and, and the, the, my contemporaries, at least, uh, at least the people that I've talked to there, I've never talked to somebody who's so averse about guns, you know, and maybe that's just the people I surround myself with, yeah. um, you know, and I, I support any, anybody that they want to, you know, what they want to say about guns and anything like that. Freedom of speech, obviously. And well, I think it's good to have an open dialogue anyways, because yeah, I might learn something from a, from a, a super anti-gun argument. I, I might learn something I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I wish more people had conversation. They, I wish they really sat down and communicated instead of just barking out talking points and both sides are guilty. And we've talked about that before. 
most of I think a lot of despite what you see in the news, I think that might be even a vocal minority. I think a lot yeah. of my contemporaries, you know, 25 to 35 year old are actually maybe either in the middle or just uneducated on guns and they don't necessarily have an opinion, you know, I've, cause I've talked to some people who I thought would be anti-gun and they're like, no, I'm not against them. I just, they're just not my thing. Yeah. You know, I think well, that's kind of interesting. And you pulled up that report that one time about millennials buying guns. Like, yeah. It, more millennials concealed carrying per capita than their older counterparts, which is, which is completely opposite of what I would think of just from what I would, what information I have, right? It's yeah. Something that you wouldn't think is accurate. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people, people just buying more guns too, you know, and, and, but less violence happening, you know, the world still is kind of a scary place and you're responsible for your own yeah. safety. But we did that episode on, uh, the FBI statistics, you know, about how there's not as many mass shootings as you'd think. No. And that 20% of them were stopped by a concealed carrier, whether yeah. they fired any shots or not, even just pulling out a firearm and as a defensive gun use you know yeah and we've talked about that how many times too you know i had to throw that out on facebook argument the other day oh really yeah that uh almost three thousand times a day they're used and i says if you don't believe me google yeah cdc defensive gun use because that also i think they they add uh police defensive gun uses right in there and and that's the thing too is that you know they're talking about this on joe rogan had somebody on they were talking about guns Mm -hmm. um a while ago and he was talking about how you know you can add the numbers to make things sound worse than they are you know talking about gun violence and all that where there's thirty thousand gun deaths a year whatever but you know when you factor in you know suicides that takes out a sizable chunk 60 percent. yeah and then you take out gang violence or police involved shootings or something like that and the number is even smaller you know so it's just interesting that you know, in, in this day and age where there's more information than ever, that that information yeah. can get skewed and people just and take it as... it's amazing that nobody, l- like, fact checks it. Yeah, they just take it as gospel. And there's and probably a it. few. There's probably a few people that are like, well, is that true? Let me look it up. But for the most part, it's, no, my guy said it. My team said it, so it must be true. Yeah, or they just share the headline on Facebook and that's mm-hmm. it, you know? So, and that's that's one of the goals of, that we started with this podcast was being able to educate people and dispel myths and, and make people more comfortable with guns and... um you know, I think we've done that. I hope we've done that in our in a small part. Yeah, I hope so too. And you know, I've talked to people. We've had a few people on the show that have never shot guns before. Yeah, Your my aunt, aunt never shot yeah. an AR, and she came on and shot an AR. And that was awesome. And she even shot the full auto MP5. Yeah, which was pretty killer. Yeah, poor choice of words, but <laughs> pretty cool. And yeah. we've talked about maybe one day it will happen. We'll be able to get maybe some BSU students that are kind of not gun friendly where we, maybe we can get them into the range and they can spend some time behind again and and really contemplate the news that they see yeah yeah we um yeah did i say byu or boise state no you said bsu okay yeah get more people like that on um to be able to to experience it because i think that's one of the things is a lot of people talk about guns but they've never shot one they've never even handled yeah. one and i think a lot of it comes from you know, they're, they're, uh, how they're influenced, you know, or, or where their, um, perceptions of guns come from, you know, in, yep. in more rural areas, it's just, a, it's, it's looked at like it should be like as a tool or, mm-hmm. um, just a part of life or whatever for hunting or for, um, you know, defense of your property or whatever, um, for man or beast, um, like coyotes. But, um, you know, when you hear about it in, in the cities, or ground squirrels, whistle pigs, Mm-hmm. Is that the technically what they're called as ground squirrels? Rock chucks. Rock chucks. I've only heard them called whistle pigs. Well, rock chucks and ground squirrels are not the same thing. Oh, well, I didn't know that. What's a rock chuck? It's a marmot. A marmot? It's about a good 12 inches tall, 8 inches in diameter. Annoying. Huh. They're disgusting. Fair enough. Nice marmot. It's a good movie right there, if you can catch that one. Anyway. Groundhog Day? No, Big Lebowski. Oh, man, I've only seen, like, parts of that movie. Oh, man, you're missing out. Um, the dude. The dude abides. But, um, no, when you are when you grow up in, like, cities and you see in the news all the violence that happens and gang, either gang violence or shootings or whatever, then you automatically associate guns as with bad, you know, being yeah. bad. 
And I think that's yeah, where that's that influence. That's what you're exposed to. Yeah, that's all you're going to see. And that's the only thing you ever hear. And, you know, I will say John brought up an interesting point when we interviewed him um, a couple weeks ago about how a lot of people say they don't like guns, they're anti-gun, but they'll go see action movies or war movies or whatever where guns are central to the theme. Well, the actors are the same way, too, like Mark Wahlberg and those guys. They're Danny Glover. Yeah. He was in some Matt great... Damon. Matt Damon's another Matt Damon, yeah. yeah. Ben, ben contributed over there from the corner. Yeah, Ben's in the peanut gallery hanging out. Oh, he's Robert th- Redford. Oh, he's gross. <laughs> but you're, they make millions of dollars. Liam Neeson. Oh. He's anti-gun? Oh, my gosh, yes. Really? Yeah, screw that guy. I just don't understand that. Like, you know, like, I, thankfully, Keanu Reeves is, is good with guns. Keanu Reeves. And is, pro-gun as well, yeah, for is, that matter. Well, yeah. He's uh, he's an interesting guy. Yeah, he also has his own custom motorcycle shop, which I'm a big fan of. So, lives in like just a regular apartment. Like it's a nice apartment, but it's like an apartment. He's it's not like, like a, a mansion. Guy, yeah. yeah, donates a lot of his money to good causes. And we stuff, should invite so. him on the range on the podcast. That'd be great, man. Get him out here in Idaho. He'd be like he he would do it too because he's like he's that nice of a guy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe you had. I should shoot him an email. And he's trained with Taryn Butler. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen any of those videos? Man, that's cool. Dude can shoot. He sure can. So <clears throat> he, Maybe I've said this before. He reminds me of Steve McQueen. So Oh, yeah, for sure. So Steve McQueen, back in the day, he was racing motocross. He was he all his own stunts. It, the best car chase movie of all time. Bullet. Bullet. <laughs> yeah, next would be the Blues Brothers. But, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, he did. that was him driving the car the whole time. Really? He was a badass. And That's so, crazy. So Keanu Reeves kind of reminds me of the same, um, kind of out of the same cloth. You know what I mean? He yeah, totally. He does all his own stuff. Yeah, and you know what's interesting too about the celebrities and stuff is they usually have bodyguards, more than likely armed, like award shows and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's kind of hypocritical, but what are you going to do? So I'm trying to think of what else, what else we've done. We've talked about, we've talked about gun politics a little bit and we need to get into that. I think a little bit more. We yeah, need to have Greg Pruitt on and yeah. And he's down. Yeah. Second amendment Alliance. I don't second amendment Alliance. Yeah. We've talked about holsters. We've had, we've had, we've had a lot of different kinds of people on the podcast too. We've had international guests. We have had an international guest. I think that was the first time at me for me uh, ever interviewing somebody from Australia. Yeah. And that's, that's interesting to, to look at. Uh, I remember when we looked at uh, England banning knives. Oh, well, ridiculous. Yeah, uh, it, it's kind of interesting. Like you said, it, it could be looking into an app. <laughs> yeah, could, app. Welcome to the North West. It could be like looking into a possible future, a, a dystopian future of the yeah. U.S., but it can happen. You know, Australia's been going the last few months, had some really interesting things happen with their gun politics, at least looking from the American point of view. Oh, really? So they've had a lot of extremely violent crime lately, like... That's unfortunate. And and it never stopped from 97 on anyways. Like, it, it was on the rise. Well, actually, it was on the decrease. Uh-huh. That's, oh, yeah, the gun ban worked. Not really. It's, yeah. it was, that was the trend anyways. Sure. But uh, th- the gun movement is catching some traction. In fact, I just, last week or so, uh, there's, there's a range coming in New South Wales. Really? And the government is helping fund it. Wow. So that's crazy. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I remember when we did interview uh, Aussie Chris, he was talking about how things have gotten a little more uh, into the pro gun favor yeah, a little bit lately. More guns now than before the ban. Yeah. More guns now than before the ban. And they're allowed a little more, I think, leniency. There's there's still some. No semi automatics. No semi automatics. And there's still a lot of rules. And the handguns have to be kept at the club and all that kind of stuff. Your ammo has to be locked in the safe in a separate lockbox right <laughs> and they can come check your safe at any time Anytime. which i think is crazy unlawful search and seizure anybody yeah. but hey it's different not in their, country not in their constitution different country like, like we pointed out it it's a privilege not a right there yeah yeah i mean we've also talked about uh you know women shooters mm-hmm. and uh, we've had sarah and we need to get jessica in and mm-hmm. talk about that and brenda um brenda still competes i think doesn't she still the competitions I think so you know she's a good shooter a great shooter um, yeah, we've had Bill on. We've had our instructors. Um, we've had at least Bill on, I think, once or twice. Yeah. Learned about his uh, 
his life in the law enforcement world and his uh, qualifications, he can shoot really well too. He's, and he's, um, he's so humble about it. That's what he funny. is. He is. But he, you know, what's funny. He's like the grandpa that you didn't expect. <laughs> he's going to, he's going to give you hell for calling him a grandpa. I now. don't care. He's a grandpa. <laughs> uh, but what I like about Bill actually is he'll, he still pr- practices the fundamentals. I yeah. mean, before like classes and stuff like that, he would set up a target for himself and he just, you know, shoot and then did okay. Shoot, go a little bit farther, shoot again, and just keep practicing the fundamentals. Yeah. Um, and he's cross eyed dominant like I am. He does that thing where he, because he's a righty, so he, he's left eyed dominant, so he has to cock his head over to the right to see. Whereas I'm the opposite, hey, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it works. So we've done a lot, man. We've done a lot. And you, uh, you started, uh, started the podcast living here mm-hmm. in uh, Boise. Or in Meridian, I guess, technically, and you're back in Idaho Falls. Yep. Well, right now you're here, but yeah, um, you know, but still a part of the shop for sure. Yeah, I I definitely don't want to lose lose my identity from the shop. Yeah, um, and then um, yeah, Ricky, we uh, Ricky has moved on to some some bigger and better things and spent some more time with his family and. Uh, you know, we're sad to see him go, but uh, he was a big contributor. We can't yeah. uh, discount his contributions, and he taught he taught me a lot about you know the actual internals and and the operations of firearms. You know, a lot of the gunsmithing stuff. Yeah. Um. So that was that. You know, and he he always had really good questions for people, and you know he was a, he was a big contributor. He's you know, one of the you know people who started it. So. So we have to give credit where credit is yeah. due there. And he is missed. And he, uh, he was kind of boring at times, right? <laughs> he, he got dry. And I think he even understood that. But uh, he was knowledgeable. Yeah. And he had passion about things, too. And that's what people need to understand. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've done a lot in a year, man. I know I keep saying it, but it's uh, it's it's been a hell of a ride for sure. So. Ben just took a picture of us. It's really nice. We'll put it on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. So, um, but also, I mean, you know, we want to make sure we hear from you guys too. Um, yeah, we wanted to make sure to in this forum that it was as open as possible, and and we wanted our listeners to communicate with us what they want to know and what they want to hear. Yeah, um, we've had some listener feedback. Yeah, uh, we had an bit. episode dedicated all the way uh, for our friend Todd, I believe. Uh, it was in Kansas or Kentucky. God bless Kansas. it. Kansas. It was Kansas. That's right. Jayhawks, man. Jayhawks. That's right. That's right. Um, and we've had, we talked about, you know, like the five firearms we would have no matter what. Yeah. Talked about safe storage and talked about. Uh, we had Rob on the. Old on man the, Rob. Yeah. yeah. We had old man Rob on. He was great. We got to have him back on again. Um, you know, just all kinds of people. We're going to keep doing that as well. We're going to get to know some more of the of the independent staff. And so then when you do come in and visit, even if you're from far away, you can feel like you know everybody here already. Yeah. So, but yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll call it a short episode, I think. And uh, we'll call it for now, unless there's anything you want to no, talk about. I don't and think so. I think we covered it pretty well. So here's to another year. Yeah. And... Um, you it's know, only the beginning. It's only the beginning. Thank you, uh, you know, you listening for uh, for being a part of it as well and supporting us. And uh, and we'll we'll uh, we have an episode in mind where we're going to kind of talk about what we want to do in the future as far as episodes. And that'll be the next one. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that next time, and we'll talk about what we want to do and what our goals are. And um, you know, you can help us stay on track with that. So hopefully, uh, but for now, yeah, any <laughs> feedback, episode ideas, anything you want to hear in the next year, uh, email us podcast at ii shooting.com, mm-hmm. uh, facebook.com slash range minded podcast and uh, search for us on Instagram at range minded podcast. So yeah. other than that, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Right, see you guys. Bye. Thanks for listening to range minded. Find us online at range minded podcast on Facebook. Or send us an email at podcast at iishooting.com. We're always happy to get feedback, episode suggestions, whatever you want to send us, really. And be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and pretty much wherever else you get your podcasts from. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.